Will Howdy there folks and welcome into today's video. First off, if you're wondering where the heck is my face, um, I'm recording this in a car going 80 miles an hour so I don't think it would be the best situation to kind of show my face here. Uh, but nonetheless, okay, we got a lot to talk about in regards to the market here today. Uh, a lot of things I just kind of want to show you guys, go over. Uh, I was buying a lot of stocks out there today. Um, this is my biggest buy day I've personally had in the market in probably months to be quite frank, maybe since kind of May, June. Um, today was a uh, about forty thousand dollars worth of buys for me so definitely a very heavy buy day okay first off nasdaq i don't know if you guys saw this it broke through new lows here today now down 34 and a half percent year to date that's an incredible move and just for some context the worst year in history for the nasdaq was 2008 and in 2008 the nasdaq went down just over 40 percent so if you are of the belief that we're going to continue to just tank this market for the remainder of the year and there's no no november december rally then this will be the worst year in the history of the nasdaq so as far as me personally i'm kind of hoping for a november december rally and to like take a breath and stack cash a little bit but if that doesn't happen and we just tank this baby all the way through the end of the year i mean it would be kind of cool to know that hey i was part of the nasdaq in the worst year ever in history right that's kind of like a badge of honor for all of us in the stock market nonetheless so it's been an absolute disastrous year obviously uh for for the nasdaq as far as where the s&p 500 is sitting at now uh on a year-to-date basis we're down about 25 percent roughly for the S&P 500, 25.5%. So obviously a pretty devastating year. And the way to think about that is, you know, that's people's retirement funds, you know, uh, lost about a quarter of the value there so far. Now, in regards to ELF, uh, you know, this is... Uh, this is a pretty strange situation. So first off, ELF has performed great this year. I don't know how many of you guys have seen this so far, but the stock has done tremendous this year overall. It's up nearly 20%, which in this sort of year, it's very hard to find any stocks to be green. But ELF essentially got upgraded here today as far as the stock price goes. And the reason they got upgraded, and um, you know the, the analyst is very bullish on the stock, is they, they believe that they have cracked Gen Z, as they say, which um, ELF has done phenomenal over the years with marketing um, to the future generations and whatnot. So uh, it's just a company that executes on a very high level. And, you know, you got you to gotta understand, in order to have your stock price go up on a year this bad, there has to be such a belief that your company is so dominant and so great at what they do in their business space that the stock deserves to go up. Because that's just not the situation with literally almost any other stock in the stock market for the most part, right? Even great companies like Tesla are down, what, 40% plus this year. Um, you know, Apple, Microsoft, all those stocks are down huge. And then you got an ELF that's up nearly 20%. It's just an incredible move, right? WBA makes another upward move here today, which is interesting because WBA is about to report earnings, I think within the next 24 hours, if I recall, but it's a very undervalued stock trading at a PE of five with a dividend yield of 6% plus. It's incredible. So, you know, definitely some folks coming into that one there. Okay. Palantir, I did pick up some shares of Palantir here today. I'll go over all the different stocks I bought and how many shares I bought of each uh, a little later on in the video, but I did uh, buy some Palantir here today. Okay. Uh, as far as other moves out there that caught my attention, Skyworks, you know, the semiconductor plays just continue to get hammered. Look at a stock like Shopify. I mean, my gosh, wh where's the bottom for Shop? It's just awful. Now it's at 25 bucks. I mean, just incredible, incredible move. And um, just, I mean, it's just... It, like I said, we haven't seen moves like this, honestly, since the tech bubble situation when you saw a stock like Amazon, for instance, fall 90% in that situation, right? But Skyworks Solutions, really intriguing here. Meta, this is the most I ever bought, I believe, ever in the history of Meta stock for a day. Um, today, I bought over $20,000 worth of Meta, so an absolute massive move uh, in regards to Meta. If you didn't see what happened here today with Meta. So they basically announced their new uh, VR headset. It's gonna cost about 1500 bucks. And um, it's very exciting. So first off, I don't think this is necessarily the mass market product that they announced here today. And I think honestly, before the masses get this, I think it's, we're talking like three to five years away still. So I think we still got some time to play out. But um, in, in regards to coverage, 
actually pretty positive coverage, I gotta say, from uh, media out there. And when it comes to meta, media does not like meta. They will find any reason to trash meta and to, um, you know, basically talk down on anything meta is doing. So I was actually looking at the media coverage and it's actually decent, um, which is, like I said, surprising because usually they will do anything possible to try to trash this company. It's one of the most hated stocks by mainstream media and by media in general. And um, obviously for, you know, uh, several different reasons. And one of those is, is Meta takes advertising dollars away from uh, some of those different companies, or at least that's the way they look at it, right? And it's kind of a threat to many of their outlets because people can maybe sometimes just get the, the, the information on the different social medias that Meta has out there, right? So, but yeah, I looked at the product. Definitely, it looks uh, very high quality. It looks like, uh, you know, the creme de la creme by far of anything that exists in this world as of right now. You know, we'll see what obviously Apple comes up with over the next few years whenever they announce their stuff. If I guess, if I had to guess, Apple will be late to the game. They usually don't like to move on products first. So I think Meta's got a pretty good opportunity to kind of get you know, they already have number one market share here, but to get, gather much bigger market share. And uh, then we'll see how, how Apple and then compete over the coming years once Apple eventually, you know, announces a product and shows it off and things like that, which we'll see when, when that is. But it could end up shaping up similar to how Apple and Google became competitors between iOS and Android. It could be a situation um, with Meta that's similar. But it definitely seems like Meta is definitely going the route of uh, you know making sure they include developers in a major major way which is smart because if this is really going to take off in a major way over the coming years you got to have all the developers on board that's very very important okay um, as far as a chef about some shares a chef here today you know that's just in, insane volatility in in regards to chef and um, you know it's just a stock as I stated yesterday in yesterday's video that's just a stock you know the shorts are going to do whatever they want with you know they're going to be able to Literally, they, they, they take that stock wherever they want. They want to take it down to four, they got it there in no time. They want to take it up to five, they got it there in no time. Uh, no doubt about that. Fubo, uh, I can't wait for their numbers. They're the company I own that I'm looking the most forward to their numbers, um, to be quite frank. I think the, the the user growth numbers, the revenue numbers, everything across the board is going to be tremendous for basically years to go in the future. But these next couple quarters, I think, are going to be shockingly impressive from Fubo. So we'll see, obviously, what, what happens there. If we look at big tech in general here today, MU had a very nice upward move. But outside of that, uh, a lot of devastation going on. Uber, we'll talk about Uber in just a moment. Actually, let's go ahead and talk about Uber right now because this matters in a significant way. So... Uber, DoorDash, Plunge, uh, you know, basically as the Labor Department proposes big change to gig worker classification. And essentially what they're trying to do is make these independent contractors become employees of these companies. Now that changes the tax structure for, you know, basically companies like Uber and DoorDash. So that can definitely change, you know, if you're even thinking about these companies getting to major profitability, that can definitely hurt them, at least short term. We'll see what happens longer term, but that's definitely not a good situation short term there, uh, you know, for obviously Uber Booba stock. Netflix made a big downward move. That one's been moving up on the excitement around advertising, but it's almost felt like a fake move, to be quite frank, okay? Uh, Meta, obviously, I did a ridiculous buy here today. Tesla, my asset, new big low here today, or at least a recent low, uh, down to 216 which, you know, if we pull up a year to date on, on go Tesla my SN now at this point, almost, you know, and I said this, I think a few days ago, I was like, this, this baby wants to get cut in half. You know, in, in this sort of market, basically every stock's getting cut in half. And it seems like Tesla wants to get cut in half as well. And so we'll see where it shakes out, but it's it's no bueno, okay? Mr. Softy continues to get hit time after time after time. NVIDIA, 115 here today. You know, look at Microsoft, 33% now down year to date roughly right that's a major move for a stock like microsoft and uh yeah nvidia 115 amd was in the 56 range today uh google mcdougall back under 100 here today that was one i was buying i want to show you guys something i thought was interesting if we go to retail trader investor stocks i was looking at amc today right and i hadn't tracked this one for a bit and uh it's getting close to the fives now at this point in time which just shows you the, the pure devastation in the retail landscape. Now, I know not a ton of, of the people that watch my channel own AMC stocks. So you guys probably like cares about AMC, but that was obviously 
arguably the biggest retail related stock we've ever seen in the history of the stock market and um, you know to see that one almost back in the fives now and then the ape thing that they you know kind of split off there that's down to a dollar and something uh, essentially now at this point in time so yeah it, it, it's it definitely feels like when when AMC is back in the fives you know it just feels like you've gotten all excitement hype retail excitement anything thrown out of this market to be quite frank yeah there's eight there a dollar 76 that baby's down due now in arc did you guys see arc look at this just busted through a new low here today my gosh okay obviously it's been a devastating year for arc but it had been holding up you know decent for a while there it was on the comeback and now to see it break through a new low is uh definitely just kind of devastating out there and then you look at a stock like this right that this was the hype this was excitement for a little while there bed bath and beyond and then you know look at that baby back under five bucks now at this point in time so yeah that's the um you know just kind of the devastation happening there sofi back under five bucks now at this point in time a uh, difference between sofi and some of those other stocks though sofi actually has um you know growth major growth and some excitement there some of these stocks have a lot of future growth some of these stocks are have no growth right and it's questionable like you know if they'll ever even grow their top lines to be quite frank so i just think that's something important to, to keep in mind there if we go in and take a peek at commodities here today wheat's down big so that's good to see wti is down um it looks like here today so that's definitely good to see as far as the commodities go outside of that travel stocks here today all getting pretty much hit obviously wind getting hit the hardest at a seven and a half percent downward move wow look at uber's move now 11.4 percent at this point in time housing stocks let's go ahead and take a peek at those uh no bueno no bueno uh especially for zillow zillow just continues to get absolutely pounded there but when it comes to real estate it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better folks now look at this mortgage rates are now well over seven percent and it's harder to qualify for a home just in general right um but yeah in in this situation i mean look at look what's going on here it's expected to hit around 7.125 on Tuesday. Who's going to buy a new house in this sort of interest rate environment anytime soon? There's just no way, right? At this point in time, it just makes sense to honestly just rent. Like if, you, if you're in the market, it's like, oh, I'll just rent for a bit here. Home prices are coming down in a lot of markets. It might, con might come down a lot more, honestly. And then if tack on on top of that the potential that mortgage rates could start falling at some point in 2023, it's like, why would you go out run out and buy a house right now especially when a lot of consumers are uh you know concerned about the state of things right so yeah it just real estate's in a bad place and will likely continue to be in in kind of a worse place here okay now if we go ahead and take a peek at the stocks i bought here today and kind of what i was moving out there right so i've got 193 shares this is my big huge move here today 193 shares of meta at 128 dollars. i bought 333 shares of palantir at 779 i bought 12 shares of google mcdougall at 97.84 I bought 444 or 445 shares of Fubo at 355. I bought 223 shares of Corsair at 1167. I bought 333 shares of the Chef at 452. Then I bought 111 shares of Revolve. I've actually started buying Revolve again recently, and it's been a while since I've been interested in that one until recently. And um, got that one at $21.60. Also, I've started buying Skywork Solutions for the first time since probably like 2018, maybe 2019, but I think like 2018. This is one I haven't been buying for a long time. And uh, they're benefiting massively, obviously, from all the 5G phones and, and 5G in general, right? But uh, bought 23 shares of, of Skyworks here today at $81.46. Bought a couple shares of Amazon at $111. And I bought 333 shares of the of Honest at uh, $330 here today. So definitely some bigger moves out there for me. You know, in kind of my feelings around this is I think there's still a decent probability, to be quite honest, that we're going to get a november december rally in the market right and i'm not banking on that i have no call options on that or anything like that right but i think there's a decent probability we get a november december rally let's call it that and um i think you know obviously cpi is coming out within uh, probably 36 hours from now if not yeah about 36 hours from now cpi comes out i think that that number is going to matter in a significant way 
we'll see if it comes in hot or if it comes in, you know, a little little tamer. Than <coughs> expectations. The good news around CPI is a lot of people have, you know, are very, very, let's just call it concerned about inflation. So I don't want to say we're at peak fear around inflation concerns and the Fed and all those sorts of things, but gosh, it feels pretty darn close. So that's the good news in regards to that. And then the other good news is bank earnings all pretty much come out Friday. And the reason that's significant for the market is what I think is going to probably happen there is the banks are going to come in with decent earnings outside of like JP Morgan in terms of like their uh, obviously, you know, taking co companies public to the public markets, IPO market, things like that. That's that's obviously going to be a disaster business. But I think everything else is going to be decent for them. Based upon the way I heard Jamie Dimon talking yesterday in that interview, I think JP Morgan's earnings are going to be just fine, to be quite frank. I think they're going to be decent. Uh, the way he was talking, I from you know the kind of reading through the tea trees leaves there i think he would have been talking very differently if he was more concerned about the you know the numbers they're about to report uh, coming up here he was more concerned about the future I mean, kind of the state of the economy, what what could happen in the financial markets if the Fed keeps raising and maybe raises too aggressively, things like that. Um, but in terms of the way he was talking, I feel like he would have been talking very different if these were going to be a huge disappointment. So we're, gonna, we're probably going to get decent bank earnings. Then we're going to go into mass earnings season. I think most of these companies are going to report decent numbers, to be honest. And um, we're going to see how the market takes that. Because when you're going into an earnings season with a market that's been tanking, right, you... I don't want to say you've priced everything in, but gosh, you've priced a whole lot in. I feel much more comfortable about going into an earnings season where the market's down massively than up massively. Let's put it that way. I mean, pull up a one month of the NASDAQ. Just in, a, in the past one month, the NASDAQ's down 15%, right? I mean, if you take it back from mid-August, that's when, you know, we were kind of flying high there for a bit. If we go back to mid-August, I mean, shoot, you're looking at about a 21% move down the NASDAQ since mid-August, right? So basically on almost a two-month basis, we're down over 20 plus percent on the NASDAQ. And if we look at the S&P 500 in that same amount of time, we're talking almost 17% roughly. I mean, that's what you call tanking into an earnings period. And I feel more comfortable um, in that sort of environment, to be quite frank. So as with me, you know me, staying focused on the long term. You know, we've got a bunch of crap going on in the short term, obviously. That's causing drama out there in the markets. And I'm going to try to keep you guys as informed as possible. I appreciate everybody being subscribed to the channel, as always. I appreciate everybody watching a video like this where I'm just going over stuff in a car, uh, speeding down a highway. Much love, as always. I appreciate you. And uh, if you ever want to say hi to me on Instagram, that'll be in the description area there and have a great day.